So anyway, I saw Inhumans and IMAX yesterday, and uh, I've had some time to think about it, and I've come to this conclusion. People would be a lot kinder to this show, I think, if it had gone straight to television. Because really, it isn't awful. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not good, but it's just not as terrible as some people would have you believe, and it's certainly not significantly worse than many other American network shows. Now, what I mean by network shows, and I just want to make this crystal clear for anyone who isn't aware, American TV shows are divided into network shows and cable shows. Cable shows are things like Game of Thrones, The Walking Dead, Breaking Bad, stuff like that. But typically the high quality stuff comes from cable. Network shows are less credible things. Things like CSI, The Big Bang Theory, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Although I do actually quite like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. But anyway, Inhumans is a network show. And Frankly, I don't think it's significantly worse than many of the other shows competing in that space. What the issue is, I think, is that Inhumans doesn't have anywhere near enough spectacle, doesn't have anywhere near the budget, doesn't have anywhere near the number of action sequences necessary to make it worth viewing in IMAX screens. Like, it's just a stupid thing to put in an IMAX screen, like what the fuck were they thinking? So ultimately what you have here is a situation where people have been asked to pay high ticket prices because IMAX tickets are fucking expensive to see what is essentially two worse than average episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that have been stapled together at the middle as part of what is basically a publicity stunt by ABC but a publicity stunt that we're having to pay for, it's just fucking dumb there was no reason for this to be on IMAX. The visual effects are not significantly better than Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which has been on TV for years. And to really understand why Inhumans was put into IMAX theatres, you have to understand the history behind this project. Now, originally Inhumans was intended to be a big Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, okay? Vin Diesel was attached to the lead role of Black Bolt. The budgets of MCU movies are usually between 150 and 200 million dollars. Okay, it was gonna be a big deal, slated for release in 2020. But there was a problem. The guy who heads up Marvel's film division is called Kevin Feige, and he really did not want to make an Inhumans movie. It didn't fit into the plan that he had for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and frankly, he just was not interested. However, the CEO of Marvel is a guy called Ike Perlmutter, and he really did want an Inhumans movie, mainly because he wanted something to compete with 20th Century Fox's X-Men franchise, because it's very unlikely that Marvel are ever going to get the film rights to the X-Men back, unfortunately for, for many Marvel fans. Um, and Kevin Feige was very much under the thumb of Ike Perlmutter for a long time, so when Ike said, I want an Inhumans movie, Kevin Feige really had no choice but to go along with it and to add it to the slate. But that changed last year, so if you're unaware, the Walt Disney Company currently owns Marvel. And so Kevin Feige went to the head of Disney, a guy called Alan Horn, and he was like, okay look dude, I have been running Marvel Studios for quite a few years now, okay? Everything's been going well, we're fucking rolling in money. So I have a proposal for you. Why don't we cut Ike Perlmutter out of the movie making process? Because he's kind of getting on my nerves a wee bit. Well, how about I just go straight to you with all of my decisions and then you can give me the green light instead of Ike. And Alan Horn said, yeah, okay, sounds like a plan, buddy. So just like that, Kevin Feige was free of Ike Perlmutter and subsequently the Inhumans movie was dropped like a fucking rock, my friends. Well, Ike Perlmutter was not happy about that. And although he was cut out of the movie making process, he was still head of Marvel Television. So he basically said, fuck you Kevin Feige, you don't want to make an Inhumans movie? That's fine, I'm going to make an Inhumans TV show. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it in IMAX movie theatres and just pretend that it's a movie, even though it's quite clearly a TV show. So basically the only reason that Inhumans, a TV show severely deficient in both budget and bold creative choices, was shown in IMAX theatres at great expense to you, if you went to go see it that is, which I don't think many people did. Um, it was all just because of a feud between two people that you will never meet. It wasn't that the people at Marvel Television watched Inhumans ahead of time and thought, wow, we've done really well here, like this is actually really good. Let's get this in IMAX theaters where it belongs. Send it out to the people. 
it was uh, basically just Ike Palmata being a really bad loser. Um, and as a result, he has now ruined the Marvel Cinematic Universe incarnation of Inhumans because they're never, they're never going to get the budget that they need on TV and they're never going to cross over with the movies. So, they're basically fucked. So let's move on to the show itself, which frankly I don't think is quite as interesting as the behind-the-scenes drama that led to its creation. How bad is it? Well, as I've already mentioned, I don't think it's significantly worse than many other network TV shows. It's certainly no worse than season 4 of Arrow, it's certainly no worse than the pilot episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which was really bad. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., though, has incidentally grown into being a really good show, so... Maybe Inhumans will get that chance, although I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to be cancelled after one season. Ultimately, I would describe Inhumans as just unremarkably mediocre. I don't think it's offensively bad, nor do I think it could ever be described as good, so it just kind of falls into a valley of mediocrity, where it's just difficult to muster any shits about it, quite frankly. And I think that has genuinely upset some Marvel fans, but equally, I think that a lot of the rage that you've seen on the internet over the past week or so is artificial. Because, frankly, the Inhumans have never been that popular, and I don't think anyone really cares, do, do they? I mean, there are bigger problems in the world than the fucking Inhumans TV show, and um, I think people blow it out of proportion a little bit in order to make clickbait headlines and clickbait video titles, but really, I think the worst thing about Inhumans is that it's just very forgettable and very bland. And the one thing that the Inhumans TV show should not be is bland, because they're actually some of the wackiest characters in the Marvel comic book universe, so how did that happen? So let's talk about the cast. The standout here is definitely Iwan Rion. I think that's how you pronounce it, although I could be wrong. Um, he played Ramsay Bolton on Game of Thrones, which I think most people know him from. And as this show is very much a watered-down, family-friendly version of Game of Thrones, um, he fits in quite nicely, and he has a charisma which is sorely lacking among the rest of the cast. Uh, so he definitely stands out as the best. I wouldn't say it's a brilliant performance, but it's definitely the best of a bad bunch. I really disliked Anson Mount as Black Bolt. I just thought he was awful in the role. And to be fair to him, it must have been really challenging, because Black Bolt is a character who cannot speak. He cannot say a word. So he has to, you know, communicate all his thoughts and feelings through facial expressions, and that is gonna be genuinely a tough task to carry out for any actor, and frankly I just don't think Anson Mount was up to it, like, he just isn't the calibre of actor that you need for that kind of performance, and would Vin Diesel have been better? <laughs> frankly I think probably not, but I would be more interested to see Vin Diesel take on the role than to see Anson Mount take on the role, because frankly... Who even is he? Like, where did they pluck him from? I have no idea. Sorinda Swan as Medusa, I think, was passable. She scrapes through with a passing grade, C-. Um, but again, you know, the word of the day when talking about Inhumans is bland. Most of the cast is quite bland, and fortunately Sorinda Swan falls into that category as well. I didn't really buy that Medusa was this highly respected, slightly feared presence in Atalan. Didn't really come across very well for me. Um, as for her hair, which is, you know, a hot topic, I actually think for a network TV show, they clearly did the best that they can. What you have to understand is that network television shows do not have very high budgets. So I think they did what they could with limited resources, and I respect that. What I couldn't believe was when they shaved Medusa's head, a minor spoiler, but it actually happens remarkably early on in the show, so I wouldn't get too upset about it. Um, I was just, I couldn't believe it, like, I'm still a little bit speechless, a little bit shaken about it, because, like, what a thing to do to the character, let's just take away, like, her most interesting feature. I mean, wow, that's one of the last things I would do with Medusa, but clearly it was an admission of defeat, they put their hands up and said, look, we've been over-ambitious, we've bitten off more than we can chew, and we do not have the effects budget to do Medusa's hair, so it's going, but... At that point, it was borderline a deal-breaker, like, I, I, I kept paying attention, but that was definitely, um, 
a disappointing thing to see. I, I was not expecting that at all. The other actors in the show, it's kind of hard to comment on, to be honest with you, because they're not really given that much to do. I thought Ken Lung was okay as Karnak, but I really hated how Karnak was written in this show. I don't recall him being quite so nihilistic in the comic books, and also there's a part which really annoyed me, where Karnak is climbing down a cliff edge and he falls because a rock comes loose, but Karnak's power is that he can see the flaws in everything. He can see the flaws in everything, so surely he would have seen that the rock was loose because it's a floor in the cliff edge and um, he would have just avoided it. Like I, I saw that and I was like what the fuck and then it really has no bearing on the plot whatsoever so it wasn't a necessary inclusion to get to the next part. He gets up at the end and he's like brushes himself off and keeps going and I'm like oh, <laughs> was that really necessary? Like why wouldn't you have just avoided that and not completely contradicted his power set? Oh my god this show it, it's doesn't make it easy on me, does it? M.A. Iqwuwakor plays Gorgon, and um, honestly, who cares? Because the character was very much throwaway in these first two episodes, not given very much to do, and saddled with some of the worst dialogue in the entire thing. There's a scene where he's on a beach in Hawaii chatting to some surfer dudes, and it is really some of the worst dialogue I've ever heard in a major production. I was actually quite shocked. Um, additionally, his, his legs, which I believe are like goat legs or horse legs or something, um, they look like they've been ripped off of like a plush toy and like sellotaped on, like it's it's a little bit embarrassing. Um, <laughs> again, it all comes down to budget with this thing, like they just need more money than they're possibly gonna get on ABC, so them's the breaks. Isabel Cornish's Crystal is possibly the worst. Um, she has the least screen time I think of the bunch, so it's forgivable, but she just says most of her lines quite awkwardly, and although, you know, again, the script isn't great, so that doesn't help, I'm aware of that, but a really good performer, I think, can elevate a bad script, and I think that's what I1 Rion does, for example. There's a scene that I actually really like between him and Medusa outside of Black Bolt's kind of meditation chamber. I thought that was actually a really good scene, but I think it is a case of I1 Rion elevating the material in a way that Isabel Cornish clearly cannot do. As for how the plot is executed, I don't think it's completely devoid of entertainment, and I'm hesitant to go too much further than that, but in all seriousness though, I didn't find myself bored by this show, which is more than I expected, and I think the reason for that is that it moves at a very swift pace. Uh, occasionally maybe a little bit too swift. For example, I didn't really understand how Maximus rallied together his coup against the against the royal family, because it just kind of happens, you know, one scene everything's pretty much okay, the next scene there's a coup, and I'm like, wow, what, what happened? But, you know, I don't mind that too much, I don't mind filling in the blanks uh, myself, but, I don't know, it's not ideal. Honestly, aside from that, there's really not much more I want to say about this show, Inhumans is the same kind of mediocre background noise that network television has been churning out for years, it is watchable, and I probably will finish the season when it airs for free on TV. The fatal error with it is that it just should never have been put into IMAX screens, because by doing that, all of the little problems with it that would have been forgivable on TV are blown up to a hundred times the size and suddenly impossible to ignore. So they've really shot themselves in the foot by, by doing this little publicity stunt, I don't think it's turned out how they were hoping it would. I'm really interested to see what kind of ratings this show will bring in when it does premiere on ABC, especially because now it just has a tornado of bad buzz following it, so uh, I can't imagine that will do it any favours. Not sure if it will uh, live past the first season, but hey, maybe it will find a saving grace. The thing is with Inhumans is that it's the kind of show that has never been popular in mainstream television, okay? Like, the reason that Arrow and The Flash and stuff like that have lived for as long as they have is because they're on The CW, and The CW has lower standards because it's a smaller network, it expects lower viewing figures. ABC is a major network, and uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is barely surviving on it. Agent Carter got cancelled uh, a couple of years ago. So, I don't know why they think Inhumans is going to be uh, their hot ticket, because uh, it's just fucking weird, you know? I think the mainstream public are going to struggle with it, because, um, you know, everybody's got weird names, and everybody looks a bit odd, and I don't know, there's a fucking 
hug the size of a small dinosaur, so it's all just, uh, it's all just very strange. I don't know if it is a pug, it might be a bulldog, whatever. You get my gist. Also, a side note I actually found really funny was the contrast between a Marvel movie after credit scene and the Inhumans after credit scene. Because obviously, at the end of a Marvel movie, at this point, pretty much everybody stays for the credits, everybody's excited to see what the teaser's gonna be, but in Inhumans, the moment it ended, people were fleeing the screen like it was a crime scene. And, um, and that's impressive that by the end of the credits, most people had left, because the credits are only about 30 to 45 seconds long. Um, also, the lights had come up, full beam, so by the time the after credits scene started, it looked like a piece of shit, because you could barely see it, because all the lights were shining on it. So, I think that kind of signifies just how little people give a fuck about this show. So yeah, the enthusiasm for Inhumans is pretty low, but you know what the enthusiasm for this YouTube channel? Through the roof, my friend, so better get on the train before it leaves without you, because this shit's going viral this year. I can feel it in the air. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, if you would like to like and subscribe, of course, it's much appreciated. But not expected, because I don't expect anything of anyone anymore. <laughs> okay, thank you for watching, though. I will uh, be back soon, I'm sure. Goodbye. That was an attempted wink, but it didn't go very well. Kind of pervy anyway, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs>